garage door people are here and I gotta leave. Well, that was fun. It was like a tease. It was a tease. The garage door people were supposed to be here yesterday and, and they're here today. And I'm, I'm still sad about this. <laughs> I'm torn because I'm going to my special treat for this episode. Yet, the sweet garage door is being installed as I drive. So, that's okay. I hope he does a good job. If he doesn't, I still gotta pay him, right? So, I'll make sure it's good when I get back. I'm here at the surprise. It's a private residence, so I don't want to show it a house or anything. So let's uh, let's go take a peek. Surprise! There's the 740 horsepower surprise. It's a 37 foot cruiser's yacht. Surveyor's on the boat now, and I'm gonna go over how how you buy a boat because. Today, I'm working on buying a boat. Right now, the surveyor's going through the boat. There's not a lot of info about surveyors and what they do when you go through the boating pro buy boat buying process. So I'm gonna document it, and I hope it's informational and educational for people buying boats. I go online, I go look up a boat for sale, and all I see are dealerships that do a five minute video and they say, buy my boat, which is not informational for people that don't never owned a boat. So that's the plan today. And I will go over the whole entire process of how a boat survey works. So right now the boat is being surveyed by the surveyor. Uh, when you buy a big boat or any type of boat really, maybe over 25 feet, it's worth it to get a survey. Uh, it's peace of mind. Like I said, I don't know everything. I'm very mechanical. I can work on my cars, I can work on my house, and a boat is kind of like a house and a car put together, but it's a different type of a put together. And I want to feel comfortable, and I hire a surveyor. So right now, the surveyor went through the hull, he checked out, this, he checked out for softness on the top of the boat, inside the cabin, inside the cockpit. So far, so good. Um, the next step is going to be, he's going to check out all the mechanicals on the boat, make sure everything's running, like the hot water heater, the sink, the water system, uh, you know, the engine hatch, etc., etc. After that, we will probably take it out for a sea trial. So, I'll, uh, you'll see that when it happens. of a survey where you hear the banging he's banging the hole to make sure it's dry if it's not dry we have a problem but so far so good with this boat everything seems pretty dry and um positive thoughts so that's that's a hole out Right now, we are doing the compression tests on both engines and the generator. So far, so good. And after we do the compression tests on the engines, we're gonna take it out for a seat trial. Yeah. Throttle? Yeah leave, every, yeah, leave the throttle open. Ready? Yep. <laughs> Off on a sea trial.
Are you ready? Hold on. trial it went pretty well there's a couple of tiny little issues that uh that are not going to be deal breakers that we got to work out so we're just we didn't get some oil analysis so the survey is pulling oil from each engine and the generator and then we'll get that sent off and then once those results come back we'll uh we'll make a decision on if we want to buy the boat uh so Everything for the most part, it was a really good survey. Uh, when I get back to the house, I will recap the survey once again, and I'll, I'll just streamline what the whole process is. So, survey went well, we're super excited, and when I get home, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more and recap. Morning everybody, and welcome to another day of today I work on, and today I'm gonna work on finishing the garage door. And by finishing the garage door, it means I'm gonna install the wall mount garage opener by Chamberlain. Now, this was not my first pick for my garage door opener because in my three car garage, I have a LiftMaster 8500 series garage door opener, which I'm not sure if one's better than the other. I honestly think they might be the same, but for some reason, the LiftMaster 8500 went up in price big time. I bought them a couple of years ago for $250 a piece. For some reason, they're now at $750 a piece, which kind of blows my mind. Um, that's a huge markup. So the Chamberlain was going for $399, and I decided to spend a little less money. Since it's the barn, and since I feel like it's the same product, I'm gonna compare both of them and I'll let you know how I feel as time goes by. So moving on from the garage door install, I'm gonna recap the boat survey yesterday. The boat survey went really well, but there's just one issue that I wanna get cleared up before we actually buy the boat. And it's like the biggest issue that you could have on a boat that's not it could be a false positive it could be a false negative on the results but we need to drill into something to find out but the seller is not willing to do that until we give him our final negotiation price because a few things did pop up on the survey that need to be addressed by the seller and he know he knows about it too because I do my research and he mentioned it a few times on Facebook, but he never fixed it. So I have to, I gotta, I gotta stay firm. And even though we, we really love the boat, it's the perfect boat for us. Business is business. And if everybody knows this, a boat is not an investment. <laughs> it's not like buying a house or building a barn or renovating your property to increase your value. A boat, <clears throat> It's called boat for a reason, break out another thousand, but that break out another thousand doesn't go into an investment account or it doesn't appreciate the value of the boat. It just sinks the value even more basically. So I'm not gonna rush into buying a boat. The right one will come up. If the seller wants to work things out, then we will go ahead. But for now, we have to wait till the survey results come back and especially the oil samples. That's something I really want to see. So I will keep everyone posted, but for now, let me get, let me start working on the garage door opener.
So I'm almost finished up installing the garage door opener. I have to power it up. I gotta run all the lines to the control board on the garage door opener. And if you notice, the outlet is basically in the perfect spot. And I didn't notice, but a few years ago, I sold a house and the inspector came and he told me that you're not allowed to have extension cords for your garage door opener, which I thought was kind of funny. So that's why I put one outlet on the left side of the garage door, one outlet on the right side garage door unit. And then I put one more outlet in the middle of the garage door so I could put up the light. And that's what I'm gonna do next. So, so far the garage door is pretty much a smooth install. I really feel like it's the same model as the LiftMaster 8500. Um, this one is the RJ020 by Chamberlain. And I have to look, look it up, but I'm sure LiftMaster and Chamberlain are the same company. So let me get back to work and finish this up. having so much fun installing the garage door I had to run out because I have to go to an estimate and I am never late for anything so I had to jump I couldn't do a say I'm heading out to lunch at the barn so I am headed to lunch I'm well I'm headed to an estimate for a basement and then I am going to go eat some lunch because I'm hungry because it's lunchtime See you in a bit. I'm back from lunch, back from the estimate. That means I'm back to working on the garage door opener. It's a pretty complicated install. I've done quite a few now, so I can bang it out, but still it takes a little bit of time to get it all situated. But one important thing I wanna to talk to you about the garage doors. If you look and you see that orange red tag, it says danger, do not touch. And there's a reason why it says danger, to not, do not touch. And many people don't heed that warning. And then you know what happens? Their garage door is not working too well. They're like, oh, let me look at the spring. They try to adjust it and it explodes on them and they get hurt. So pro tip, call up your garage door company. But this garage door and any garage door, I will never touch them. I will install the openers, but that's the extent of my expertise. And there's a reason why you call professionals. So you don't get hurt and the product's installed correctly. And it will always cost you probably more in the long run if you try to be the hero and try to mess with something that's actually complicated and it takes experience to figure out. So. The garage door spring is definitely one of those things where you need to call an experienced garage door tech to take care of it. So that's, that's, that's basically my pro tip with garage doors. And I'm going to finish all the, I'm going to get all the sensors on the garage door, power it up, and then we'll test it out. My door is complete. This is a Haas Premium 360 with frosted glass and metal frames. Uh, the glass is also insulated. And if you look up, check out the light. The light is a soft white light bulb, which is 2700K. And the, the other lights, the LEDs are 4000K. So you can see how brown the soft light is, that's why it's, I can't, I can't deal with it. But anyway, onto the controls of the garage. 
we have a locking mechanism. It's like a deadbolt that locks the wheel in place so you can't try to pry the garage door open, which to me is the best feature of this garage door opener. And then the best part of this garage door opener is how quiet it is. I'm gonna close it right now and you really can't hear anything. It is super, super quiet. So that's, that's a garage door install. That's a wrap for today's episode. Garage door opener is complete. There's nothing else to do for the garage door. Finally done. Tomorrow, I finish up the few pieces of insulation that I'm short on, and then I'm gonna fly through this drywall. So if you like these episodes, please like them. If you wanna subscribe and get a bunch more content, about everything I work on, click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.